Hello and welcome to our second tutorial on the eCard charging suite. My name is Yannick Weber and today I will work with you to extend our already set simulation from the last video with an OCPP gateway and connect to a backend. The connection to the backend has the major advantage that we can see the process bundled and also control them. Let's start directly with Tier A portal. I have now reopened our initial project from the last video and I have to make some settings here to be able to connect the whole thing to the OCPP gateway. The settings have to be made in the core functions folder and then in the ECC suite config startup block. Here we now can see our interface ID. We now need to make this active and switch it to our local Profinet interface. After this, we have to set the IP address of the Windows site where the gateway can be reached. We find it by opening our adapter. We find it by opening our adapter settings and then looking at details here. And then we get our and then we get our IP address displayed. In my case, that is now the 0 0.45. Then I close this again and enter the 0 0.45. It is important that the Windows interface and the interface of the PSC must be in the same network. After that, I scroll down and now I have to change the login type. By that, it is set to auth type local, but we want to authorize the whole thing via the backend and the gateway. Therefore, I mark it and change it to auth type OCPP. Then I reload the whole thing into the PLC. And so I have made the settings for the PLC. Now I have to configure the gateway. To make the settings for the gateway, I have to go to my already opened gateway folder and select Configuration JSON. Now all settings related to my gateway are displayed. The first important setting is the charge box identity. This must match the backend. A charge box is created in the backend and either a name is automatically entered in the backend the first time I log in or it is already entered in which case it must match. The next important setting is the number of connectors. Here the number must be entered, which is also stored in the TIA project. Since it matches mine, I can already go to the next one. This is the TCP Trans Socket IP. Here the IP address of the PLC must be entered in order to be able to later use the function of the firmware update. Again, the correct setting is already set, so we can go to the WebSocket URL. Here the URL is entered, which is necessary to reach the backend. For me, it is already set for the backend Stevie. Then I can go to the last setting. This is the logging file name. Here I have to enter where my log file will be stored. If we just enter log.txt, a text file will be created in the same hierarchy as the gateway.exe is located and filled with log messages. Once these settings are entered, I still need to save them. And then I can close the file again. And have configured my gateway and can proceed to the start. Now that all settings are done, 
we can make the settings in PCSIM advanced. For this we go offline. Close the controller and change to PSCSIM Advanced Virtual Ethernet Adapter. We start the controller and then load the project again. Or we just go online and check first if we need to reload. Then we go to the virtual Ethernet adapter. Then show all interfaces and start the search. This can take some little while. And then we select Go Online. Now select that we can start the controller and have successfully changed the PSCSIM Advanced instance. Now I just have to start the gateway. For this I go back to the gateway folder and open the ocppgateway.exe. Now it shows the firewall message and there I need to allow all the accesses. Once that is done, I go into my gateway, in my case the Stevi, and go to unknown charge points and can allow my new charge point. Once that's done, I see the messages change and I also see that the connection is up. On the TIA portal side, I can check again in our watch and forest table from the first video to see if I have a connection. To do that, I open the car simulation, go to watch and see that I am also shown as available. To check if everything is reacting correctly now, we can simulate a car again, just shown in the first video. For this I enter a 10 here, change this to true, this to true and enter a key here which exists and is stored in the gateway. In my case it would be this key and I modify again all the variables. So I see here a transaction was started and in the gateway I can see we are in charging. Where before once in suspended EV and in preparing. And if I now open my backend again and go to transactions, I see that a transaction was started. Yeah, that's all about it. We have seen how to extend our simulation from last time with an OCPP gateway and the connection to the backend is already established. The next video is about how we increase our TIA portal application and our gateway to multiple connectors, so we can see how we make it scalable. Feel free to tune in there as well. Thanks for your attention and see you soon!